In today's show, we look ahead to week 17 in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble, on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That's PricePicks.com and the promo code is Locked On. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. So we're here to look ahead to week 17, and this is going to be the most important show that I do, and also the least important show that I do. And let me explain. It's, it's, there's one thing you need to take away from this week 17 show. We talk about schedules and streaming and all that sort of stuff. That's what we do on these shows. And your number one takeaway is do not do it. Do not do any of that. Do not stream anything. Right? That is your takeaway. So this show, it's pretty useless in that regard, except like everything that we talk about, what day are the games played? When are the back-to-backs? It doesn't matter. You don't care. You do nothing with it. Let me beg you, do not do anything with streaming at all. That's why this show is useless. But this show is also the most important show of the year because you get that lesson out of it, because you get that tip of don't do anything. So the whole show, I, could, I guess I could do it in five seconds. Say, hey, here's the week 17, make no moves. Right? That's what you do. And why, you ask? Well, the trade deadline is happening this Thursday. By the way, that's a quick promo. Thursday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern, February the 9th, trade deadline show live on YouTube. Come join me and a host of other people as we discuss the things as they go down. So again, we'd normally be looking at how we're maximizing games for the week. Who are we adding for the week? Um, how are we approaching... Um, uh, streaming and maximizing things, and it just doesn't matter. Do not make a waiver ad unless a trade goes down. Once we hit Thursday and the deadline's done, then we can make our, our waiver decisions Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but don't do it. If you've got unlimited waiver ads, it's a bad way to have a league, but if you've got unlimited waiver ads, no problem. Go for it. Um, do whatever you need to do. Standard week. We'll go through some stuff here. But if you have, if you have limited waiver ads, don't do anything. Don't make an ad for, oh, what about this week? And you'll see it on the thumbnail here, like Seth Curry's on the thumbnail. Yeah, mate, it's, it's, uh, Kyrie might sit this week with his fake calf soreness or get traded, or maybe I'm going to try um, Cam Thomas in this situation. Uh, I, just hold. Like, I, I wouldn't waste it. I wouldn't waste an ad for a situation where I don't think Kyrie is sitting the rest of the season. Um, and if Kyrie is traded, those guys aren't going to have value. Um, to do, what, for three games this week? I think it's an absolute waste. And I wouldn't do it. And now, we go to talk about the show. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) (laughs) Remember, just don't do anything. Great to have you here. Chat amongst yourselves. What's your favorite beer? What's your favorite cuisine? Do you prefer uh, Asian food? Do you prefer pizza? What about Middle Eastern? You a kebab guy? I don't care. But don't make waiver moves. Don't make them. Until a trade happens. So how does the schedule go? Great show, isn't it? Great. How's the schedule look? Um, Pretty good. Eight games Monday, six on Tuesday, nine on Wednesday, four on Thursday. So theoretically, they'd be great streaming days, but we're not streaming. And then we get the big one Friday, which is a very interesting day. 11 games Friday. And the thing about this is that there are 11 games on. You are going to be in a situation where the deadline is done on Thursday. And players that are traded will not play on Friday and probably on Saturday, where there are 20 games on across Friday and Saturday. And there are going to be wild, wild one-game stream options. Random players who don't play will play 30 minutes a night because we're waiting for players to transition teams. And again, you're probably not going to use a waiver move to get those guys into your lineup because you've used them to grab the season-long value on the trades. So if, if there isn't any great season-long values on trades, this is another reason why we don't use wave rates. So trade deadline happens. Say there's 15 trades, and only one of them really makes sense in a standard league to have any sort of value increase, right? And one other thing about the trade deadline, I know we're talking trade deadline here a lot, is that 
the vast, in terms of value changes, the thing that happens the most in trade deadlines is players lose value, not necessarily players gaining value. So you're more likely to be in a situation where, oh, this guy might become a drop versus like, I must add this guy. That is a blanket statement. It's a big generalization. But the general theme is more people become drops than hot ads. So again, if there is only like one or two interesting ads after the deadline and you miss out on them, then streaming Friday, Saturday, you will get random blokes in, like just the weirdest situation in to get players in. And that is where you can use those ads that you've saved up. So if you missed out on a trade deadline winner, you can just attack the streams Friday, Saturday, and maybe Sunday, even though there's only two games on, because Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday. So there's 11 games Friday, nine Saturday, two Sunday. So that is how the week plays out. It is a weird week. There's going to be heaps of upheaval Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday in players trading, players not being in lineups, random guys getting extra minutes that you don't expect. The other thing for the week is it's a low volume week in general. Only nine teams play four games this week. That's not many. We get 16, 17, 20 sometimes. Only nine teams play four games. Who are they? It is the Spurs, the Celtics, the Kings, Bulls, Cavs. Jazz, Mavericks, Pistons, and Nets play four games this week. That's why the Nets thing is so interesting because there'll be a lot of people rushing to add Seth Curry or rushing to add Cam Thomas or rushing to add Joe Harris because they've got four games this week. And that is good. They have a Monday, Tuesday back-to-back, but I wouldn't waste an ad on a Monday, Tuesday back-to-back. Now, I guess the Nets is a little bit different because I guess Kyrie might not get traded and he might have a fake injury and see out the rest of the season. I honestly, there's almost no way to me that happens. That's 0.5% chance that Kyrie isn't a part of the team and nobody replaces him. There is such, and it's Kyrie. So putting likelihoods of things onto scenarios is a very, very dangerous game, right? But I still look at it. There's almost no way that they just say, well, we're not going to trade you and the winner's not going to have you all season. I just don't think there's any way that that is what ends up happening. So while it would be appealing to get three games in four nights out of Seth Curry and Cam Thomas on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, thinking maybe Kyrie sits those games, I wouldn't waste the waiver ad because probably by the time Thursday comes, either Kyrie's playing back on Tuesday or he's traded and Westbrook's here or Chris Paul's here or Spencer Dinwiddie's here and those guys don't mean anything. So I just wouldn't waste the ad. Knock yourself out if that's what you want to do. No problem. Like if you disagree and you have complete distrust in Kyrie, which I get it, like it's totally reasonable, that you think he's just not going to play a single game this season, which which would obviously make it almost impossible for him to get this max contract that he wants in the offseason. Like who is going to be like, yeah, Kyrie, we love to give you $50 million a year for the next four years. Um, it's great when you just bail on teams cons- consistently. We'll definitely give you that money. 100% will give you that money. This was the year you had to... Yeah, put up and shut up after last season to try and get that contract after no one wanted you in the offseason. Remember that when you tried to get sign and trades going to decide whether you're going to opt out of your contract and everyone said, nah, man, like just go and play basketball and you didn't. Like that's just not going to be happening for him. I I know I'm going on about Kyrie a lot, but every way that I look at it, I go, there's no way that they are just not playing him or he's just not going to play all season and no one comes back. I just, I can't, that is such a small percentage chance to me. But again, you, I give my opinion and my reasons for it, and you have your own thoughts on it and opinions and reasons on it, and you think about what you think is more likely to happen because I'm not going to be right every time. I'm just not. It's impossible for me to do that. You're also not going to be right every time. No one is. Weird things happen. Always be ready to adjust. Always be flexible. Always be ready on the, uh, on the quick snap-up. Nine teams with four games. The Pelicans play two games. Not great for them. They've got a pretty shit run here. They have two games, two games, two games over the next three weeks. Now, that looks bad, but remember, it's the all-star break. So the the six games they have over the next three weeks is terrible, but most of the teams are playing only seven or eight. It's not like other teams are racking up 12. So while it looks bad, it is metered out by the reduction in games from everyone else. And we've got 20 teams, uh, 20 teams playing three games for this week. For a show where I said I wasn't going to say anything, it wasn't important, I've said a lot. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy, but it's not salary caps, it's not building rosters, it's not going up against thousands of other people. It's just you versus player projection. So you might see Seth Curry, and the points is set at like 11 and a half. And you go, oh, well, Kyrie's out, I'm going to go over that. So you do. Or you might see Cam Thomas um, assist line set at 0.5, and you go, Cam Thomas, zero. 
He's definitely not getting them. We'll go less than that. And you go between two to six of those, put them into a lineup. You can win up to 25 times your entry fee back. It's easy. You can do it in under 60 seconds. You can do it in over 30 US states. You can do it in Canada. Well, most of Canada. Anyway, and you can do it for lots of sports, not just the NBA. You can do it for the Super Bowl. You can do it for the NHL when they get started back up. You can do it for Major League Baseball, Women's College Basketball, Men's College Basketball, the WNBA. When all of that starts back up in a few months' time, you can do it for NASCAR, PGA, boxing, um, MMA. UFC, same thing. You can do it for cricket. You can do it for European basketball. And of course, you can do it for disc golf. So download the PricePix app or go to pricepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, PricePix will give you $100. If you deposit $50, PricePix will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, let's look at streaming for the week. Don't do it. Simple. I'm not going to tell you who to stream because don't, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Let's look at back-to-backs. Um, obviously, fewer back-to-backs this week because there's just fewer games on. Um, Sunday, Monday, we've got Sacramento, Cleveland heading into the week. Monday, Tuesday, it's Chicago, it's OKC in Brooklyn. So we worry there a little bit about Ben Simmons and his knee, TJ Warren, with a Kyrie's calf is too sore to play. Tuesday, Wednesday, it's Minnesota, maybe go Bear. Which sits there. Wednesday, Thursday, no back-to-backs. Thursday, Friday, it's Phoenix and Milwaukee. Milwaukee, Devin Booker should be back, but he'll be sitting probably one of those. Cam, John- uh, Cam Johnson will probably be sitting one of those. And then in Milwaukee, you've got the risk of Chris Middleton and of Giannis sitting one of those back-to-backs. Friday, Saturday, there's tons of teams playing back-to-backs, but um, again, it's 11 and 9. Having roster spots there, it's all more going to be about just attacking the stream options that appear due to trades. If you do want to look at Thursday, Saturday combination, just to avoid the 11 game Friday, Denver, Atlanta, Lakers, Magic, Nets, and Bulls. Weekend, no back to back. And then Sunday, Monday, no back to back because there's only two games on Sunday. So we just really have minimal back to backs. All the back to backs are Thursday, Friday. Uh, sorry, Friday, Saturday, which is really when we're in prime trade deadline um, reaction period where streaming for a back to back is not really as important as streaming for um, single game value or long term value. Let's look at our streaming plan for the week. Yeah, don't do it, please. Until we hit the end of the week, don't do any streaming. Front and back loading. Chicago and Brooklyn start their week with three games in four nights. That's really good if you've got those players, but don't make ads to go and add them because of this good schedule. There are eight teams that only play one game in the first four. Again, it's a very low volume week. We don't care. We're not moving on from guys because of this. I mean, we can move on from players if you want, but don't add people. Don't waste your waiver ads. To end the week, not one single team has three games in four nights. Everyone plays either two or one at the end of the week. There are a bunch of teams that don't play on the weekend. The Bucks, the Blazers, the Wolves, the Thunder, the Rockets, the Clippers, the Pelicans do not play on the weekend. Injury returns. Couple in Phoenix, Campaign and Devin Booker are likely to return this week. Johnny Wall has a chance to return for the Clippers this week. Where he fits in the rotation? Really interesting question. Um... Bobby Portis, I don't think Bobby Portis is going to return this week, but the reevaluation from his initial knee sprain should be coming this week. So we, hopefully we get a bit more of an updated timetable on when he's going to be back. Luca is out for the next couple of games, but maybe we get him back at the end of the week. Christian Wood should be back this week. Does he remain as a member of the Dallas Mavericks? I'm hearing a lot of things telling me he's not, but I don't know. So we'll see exactly what happens with him, whether he's back to play and whether he's actually playing in the Mavericks colors. They're, they're the major guys, I think, that we're looking at returning this week. KD, probably next week. I'd be uh, Week 18, not week 17, would be my guest. Today's episode is brought to you by the legendary blokes over at Built Bar because we want treats. Treats are good. They taste nice. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, we love it, right? But we don't want to do it with high calories and high fat and high sugar. Getting something that tastes delicious, tastes like a treat, covered in 100% real chocolate, but is good for you. That's what you want. And that's the dream. That's what everyone prays about every night. We, I want a treat that's low in calories. And Built Bars delivers. They deliver in so many great flavors. They deliver with that 100% real chocolate and with those low calories. And now, instead of going to Built.com and typing away, you can just stroll into a Walmart. Because I know you love going into a Walmart. You can go straight down to the pharmacy section and you can just grab your Built Bars. You can load them up. The four bar boxes, cookies and cream flavor, double chocolate pl- flavor, coconut puffs flavor. It's all there at Walmart. Or if you're near a Sam's Club, go in there as well. 13 bar boxes in brownie butter or in the churro flavor. So go to Sam's Club, go to Walmart, go to built.com and order yourself your boxes of built bar. Built bar is built different. 
Let's look at weekly leagues. Now, this is a little bit different because uh, with a weekly league, you need to make your ads at the start of the week. And um, yeah, any ad or trade that happens during the week, then we're making our decisions for the following week, if that makes sense. So these are players are all available in over 50% of leagues and category leagues that you can add and probably start this week. Kelly Linick played 30 minutes last game. Back in a solid role. Royce O'Neal, the Basmati man. Seth Curry with four games. Alec Burks, even though I'm not sure it lasts. Alec Burke. You can try Cam Thomas. If Simmons is going to be out, if Warren's going to be out, if Kyrie's going to be out. Again, that's a lot of ifs. Thomas will probably play 25 minutes and have 28 usage and do nothing else, but he might be useful. Um, you got Gabe Vincent. I don't think Kyle Lowry is going to play this week. He's out with knee soreness again. Kyle Lowry dropped, by the way. Um, I think Gabe Vincent's a great ad for this week. Josh Richardson, with the absence likely of Romeo Langford and then Jeremy Sohan and Trey Jones, at least for some of that time, Richardson's got real value. You could even throw Malachi Branham into that mix. And then there's Dan Gafford, who we saw last game got the minutes over Denny Avdia. We wanted to see it, and we saw it. Avdia played 15 minutes. Gafford played like 28. Now, that's not going to be the split every game because Avdia was terrible. But as I stressed a million times about the Washington Wizards, the fact that they're not starting Denny and Gafford's not there, we don't know what this role is. And the fact that he shot 84% against the Spurs is not an indication that he's going to be this excellent offensive option every game. I still think you can hold Denny in 12 10 leagues, but my preference has always been Gafford. My preference remains Gafford in a category league for now. Let's look at guys that you can sit for the week. We're only two games. I don't think we're starting any Pelicans. I wouldn't be bothered with Gordon Haywood for the week with his limited minutes. I wouldn't bother with Bogdan Bogdanovic, who's seen limited minutes the last two games as well. Rui Hachimura, I wouldn't roster him, but if you do have him for some reason, don't start him. Cam Johnson with limited games. Devin Booker with limited games, not players that I'd want to start in a weekly league. Um, Tari, regular season. We saw it, didn't we? 13 minutes last game. 13. Not saying he played well. 13 minutes. And I will continue to say on record, I do not think that a trade deadline trade of Eric Gordon means we get 26 minutes of Tari Eason. I don't think it's the case. And Bruce Brown is not someone I would start for this week either. For points league, some guys we can look at. A lot of the same names that we already talked about, but Alec Burks, Royce O'Neal, Olenek, Seth Curry. You can put Cam Thomas in that mix. Joshy Richardson, maybe Malachi Branham. Derek White, Brandon Clark, Dan Gafford. It's great options to add for the week. And then for guys to sit, I wouldn't be looking at any Pelicans players to start. I wouldn't be starting Denny Avdia or Kevon Looney or Drew Eubanks in a points league uh, or Kyle Lowry or Monte Morris or Contavious Caldwell-Pope, or DeAnthony Melton. I suppose you want me to talk about the Eubanks situation in Portland. He got into foul trouble last game, and Watford went off. Watford is totally okay to try in a 12-team league. I still would prefer Eubanks. They have gone to Eubanks every time. Watford had a really red-hot game in that one against Paul, uh, not against Portland, against Washington. But the preference still is Eubanks. Because again, that one game where Watford went off, unless they make a change and we hear Watford starting, I'd like to see two or three games versus, you know, of Watford getting the minutes over Eubanks when we've seen 50 games of Eubanks being the backup and the fill-in starter every time for Nurkic versus one game where Watford popped off. So I wouldn't just make that quick switch. But understanding Eubanks has got limited value. He's a blocks guy with some field goals and rebounds. He's not going to swing everything. Watford's also not going to shoot 78% or whatever he did in that game. That's Neither of those things are likely to be true as we move forward. So... Yeah, Eubanks is not someone I'd st- worry about in points leagues, and I wouldn't rush to grab uh, Trenton Watford. Kyle Lowry, not someone I'd bother with this week either, as I mentioned. And that, guys, will do it for me today. What are, what are you going to take away from today? Don't make waiver moves until we have trades happen. Follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.